Kapila Sanskrit, Kapila is a given name of different individuals in ancient and medieval Indian texts, of which the most well-known is the founder of the Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy. Kapila of Samkhya fame is considered a Vedic sage, estimated to have lived in the 6th century BCE, or the 7th century BCE. Rishi Kapila is credited with authoring the influential Samkhya Sutra, in which aphoristic sutras present the dualistic philosophy of Samkhya. Kapila's influence on Buddha and Buddhism have long been the subject of scholarly studies. Many historic personalities in Hinduism and Jainism, mythical figures, pilgrimage sites in Indian religion, as well as an ancient variety of cow went by the name Kapila. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. The name Kapila appears in many texts, and it is likely that these names refer to different people. The most famous reference is to the sage Kapila with his student Asori, who in the Indian tradition, are considered as the first masters of Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy. While he predates Buddha, it is unclear which century he lived in, with some suggesting 6th century BCE. Others place him in the 7th century BCE. This places him in the late Vedic period 1500 BCE to 500 BCE, and he has been called a Vedic sage. Kapila is credited with authoring an influential sutra, called Samkhya Sutra also called Kapila Sutra, which aphoristically presents the dualistic philosophy of Samkhya. These sutras were explained in another well-studied text of Hinduism called the Samkhyakarika. Beyond the Samkhya theories, he appears in many dialogues of Hindu texts, such as in explaining and defending the principle of ahimsa non-violence in the Mahabharata. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism. The name Kapila is used for many individuals in Hinduism, few of which may refer to the same person. In Vedic texts The Rigveda X 27.16 mentions Kapila which the 14th century Vedic commentator Sayana thought refers to a sage, a view which Chakravarti in 1951 and Larson in 1987 consider unreliable, with Chakravarti suggesting that the word refers to one of the Murats, while Larson and Bhattacharya state Kapalam in that verse means Tani or Reddish brown, as was also translated by Griffith. The Seda Pitaka series on the Sakas of the Yajurveda, estimated to have been composed between 1200 and 1000 BCE, mention of a Kapila Saka situated in the Aryavarta, which implies a Yajurveda school was named after Kapila. The term Kapilaya, meaning clans of Kapila, occurs in the Aitareya Brahmana 7.17 but provides no information on the original Kapila. The Parisista addenda of the Atharvaveda at 11, 3 .3 mentions Kapila, Asori and Pankasika in connection with a libation ritual for whom Tarpana is to be offered. In verse 5.2 of Shvetashvatara Upanishad, states Larson, both the terms Samkhya and Kapila appear, with Kapila meaning color as well as a seer rishi, with the phrase, Arsim prasuam kapilam tam agre which when compared to other verses of the Shvetashvatara Upanishad Kapila likely construes to Rudra and Haranyagarbha. However, Max Muller is a view that Haranyagarbha, namely Kapila in this context, varies with the tenor of the Upanishad, was distinct and was later used to link Kapila and assign the authorship of Sankhya system to Haranyagarbha in reverence for the philosophical system. In the Puranas Kapila, states George Williams, lived long before the composition of the epics and the Puranas, and his name was co-opted in various later composed mythologies. As an ascetic and as sleeping Vishnu, in the Brahma Purana, when the evil king Vena abandoned the Vedas, declared that he was the only creator of Dharma, and broke all limits of righteousness, and was killed, Kapila advises hermits to churn Vena's thigh from which emerged Nishadas, and his right hand from which Prthu originated who made earth productive again. Kapila and hermits then went to Kapilasangama, a holy place where rivers meet. The Brahma Purana also mentions Kapila in the context of Sagara's 60,000 sons who looking for their Ashvada horse, disturbed Vishnu who was sleeping in the shape of Kapila. He woke up, the brilliance in his eyes burnt all but four of Sagara's sons to ashes, leaving few survivors carrying on the family lineage. 
As Vishnu's incarnation, the Narada Purana enumerates two kapilas, one is the incarnation of Brahma and another is the incarnation of Vishnu. The Puranas Bhagavata, Brahmanda, Vishnu, Padma, Skanda, Narada Purana, and the Valmiki Ramayana mentions Kapila as an incarnation of Vishnu. The Padma Purana and Skanda Purana conclusively call him Vishnu himself who descended on earth to disseminate true knowledge. Bhagavata Purana calls him Vidagarbha Vishnu. The Vishnu Sahasrahana mentions Kapila as a name of Vishnu. In his commentary on the Samkhya Sutra, Vijnanabhikshu mentions Kapila, the founder of Samkhya system, is Vishnu. Jacobson suggests Kapila of the Veda, Sramana tradition and the Mahabharata is the same person as Kapila the founder of Samkhya, and this individual is considered as an incarnation of Vishnu in the Hindu texts. As son of Kartama Muni, the Book 3 of the Bhagavata Purana, states Kapila was the son of Kartama Prajapati and his wife Devahuti. Kartama was born from Chaya, the reflection of Brahma. Brahma asks Kartama to procreate upon which Kartama goes to the banks of Sarasvati River, practices penance, visualizes Vishnu and is told by Vishnu that Manu, the son of Brahma will arrive there with his wife Shatarupa in search of a groom for their daughter Devahuti. Vishnu advises Kartama to marry Devahuti, and blesses Kartama that he himself will be born as his son. Besides Kapila as their only son, Kartama and Devahuti had nine daughters, namely Kala, Anasua, Sraddha, Haverbu, Gita, Kriya, Kyati, Arundhati and Shanti who were married to Marichi, Atri, Angiris, Palastya, Palaha, Kritu, Vashistha, and Atharvan respectively. H. H. Wilson notes the Bhagavatha adds a third daughter Devahuti to introduce the long legend of Kartama, and of their son Kapila, an account not found elsewhere. Kapila is described, states Daniel Sheridan, by the redactor of the Purana, as an incarnation of the Supreme Being Vishnu, in order to reinforce the Purana teaching by linking it to the traditional respect to Kapila's Samkhya in Hinduism. In the Bhagavata Purana, Kapila presents to his mother Devahuti, the philosophy of yoga and theistic dualism. Kapila's Samkhya is also described through Krishna to Uddhava in Book 11 of the Bhagavata Purana, a passage also known as the Uddhava Gita. As son of Kashyapa, the Matsya Purana mentions Kapila as the son of Kashyapa from his wife Danu, daughter of Daksha Prajapati. Kapila was one among Danu's 100 sons, and her other sons Kapila's brothers mentioned in the Vishnu Purana include Devamurta, Shankara, Ayamuka, Shankashiras, Samvara, Ekachakra, Taraka, Vrishaparvan, Svarvanu, Puloman, Viprakiti and other Danavas. As son of Vaiditha or Bharadvaya, in the Brahma Purana and in the Harivamsa Kapila was the son of Vaiditha. Daniello translates Vaiditha to inaccuracy, and Wilson notes Bharadvaya was also named Vaiditha unprofitable, while he was given in adoption to Bharata. Vishnu Purana notes Bhavanmanyu was the son of Vaiditha but Brahma Purana and Harivamsa omit this and make Suhotra, Anuhotra, Gaya, Garga, and Kapila the sons of Vaiditha. The Brahma Purana differs from other Puranas in saying Vaiditha was the son of Bharadvaya, and upon the death of Bharata, Bharadvaya installed Vaiditha as the king, before leaving for the forest. In the Dharmasutras and other texts As son of Prahlada, the Bhadhyana Dharmasutra mentions the Asura Kapila was the son of Prahlada in the chapter laying rules for the Vihanasas. The section IV.16 of Bhadhyana Gryasutra mentions Kapila as the one who set up rules for ascetic life. Kapila is credited, in the Bhadhyana Dharmasutra, with creating the four ashrama orders, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sannyasa, and suggesting that renouncer should never injure any living being in word, thought or deed. He is said to have made rules for renouncement of the sacrifices and rituals in the Vedas, and an ascetic's attachment instead to the Brahman. In other Hindu texts such as the Mahabharata, Kapila is again the sage who argues against sacrifices, and for non-violence and an end to cruelty to animals, with the argument that if sacrifices benefited the animal, then logically the family who sacrifices would benefit by a similar death. According to Chaturvedi, in a study of inscriptions of Kajuraho temples, the early Samkhya philosophers were possibly disciples of female teachers. Imagery in the Agamas 
Kapila's imagery is depicted with a beard, seated in Padmasana with closed eyes indicating Diana, with a Jata mandala around the head, showing high shoulders indicating he was greatly adept in controlling breath, draped in deer skin, wearing the Yagnyapavita, with a Kamandalu near him, with one hand placed in front of the crossed legs, and feet marked with lines resembling outline of a lotus. This Kapila is identified with Kapila the founder of Sankhya system, while the Vaihanasasagama gives somewhat varying description. The Vaihanasasagama places Kapila as an Avarana Devata and allocates the southeast corner of the first Avarana. As the embodiment of the Vedas, his image is seated facing east with eight arms, of which four on the right should be in Abhaya Mudra, the other three should carry the chakra, Kadga, Hala, one left hand is to rest on the hip in the Katyavarlambita pose, and other three should carry the Sankha, Pasa, and Danda. Other descriptions The name Kapila is sometimes used as an epithet for Vasudeva with Vasudeva having incarnated in the place named Kapila. Pradyumna assumed the form of Kapila when he became free from desire of worldly influences. Kapila is as one of the seven Dikpalas with the other six being Dharma, Kala, Vasu, Vasuki, Ananta. The Jayakya Samhita of 5th century AD alludes to the Chitramukha Vishnu of Kashmir and mentions Vishnu with Varaha, N. R. Simha and Kapila defeated the Asuras who appeared before them in zoomorphic forms with N. R. Simha and Varaha posited to be incarnations of Vishnu and Kapila respectively. In the Vimana Purana, the Yakshas were sired by Kapila with his consort Kasini who was from the Kasa class, though the epics attribute the origin of Yakshas to a cosmic egg or to the sage Palastya, while other Puranas posit Kashyapa as the progenitor of Yakshas with his consort Vishva or Kasha. In some Puranas, Kapila is also mentioned as a female, a daughter of Kasa and Araksasi, after whom came the name Kapila Yagana. In the Mahabharat, Kapila was a daughter of Daksha and having married Kashyapa gave birth to the Brahmanas, Kine, Gandharvas and Asparas. <laughs> Jainism Kapila is mentioned in Chapter 8 of the Uttaradhyana Sutra, states Larsen and Bhattacharya, where a discourse of poetical verses is titled as Kavilyam, or Kapila's Verses. The name Kapila appears in Jaina texts. For example, in the 12th century Hemakandra's epic poem on Jain elders, Kapila appears as a Brahmin who converted to Jainism during the Nanda Empire era. According to Jainatadharmakatha, Kapila was a contemporary of Krishna and the Vasudeva of Dadakikanda. The text further mentions that both of them blew their shanka couch together. <laughs> Buddhism. Buddhists' literature, such as the Jataka tales, state the Buddha was Kapila in one of his previous lives. Scholars have long compared and associated the teachings of Kapila and Buddha. For example, Max Muller wrote, Abridged. There are no doubt certain notions which Buddha shares in common, not only with Kapila, but with every Hindu philosopher. It has been said that Buddha and Kapila were both atheists, and that Buddha borrowed his atheism from Kapila. But atheism is an indefinite term, and may mean very different things. In one sense, every Indian philosopher was an atheist, for they all perceived that the gods of the populace could not claim the attributes that belong to a supreme being absolute, the source of all that exists or seems to exist, Brahman. Kapila, when accused of atheism, is not accused of denying the existence of an absolute being. He is accused of denying the existence of an Ishvara. Max Muller states the link between the more ancient Kapila's teachings on Buddha can be overstated. This confusion is easy, states Muller, because Kapila's first sutra in his classic Samkhya Sutra, the complete cessation of pain, which is of three kinds, is the highest aim of man, sounds like the natural inspiration for Buddha. However, adds Muller, the teachings on how to achieve this, by Kapila and by Buddha, are very different, as Buddhist art often depicts Vedic deities. One can find art of both Narayana and Kapila as kings within a Buddhist temple, along with statues of Buddhist figures such as Amitabha, Maitreya, and Vairokana. In Chinese Buddhism, the Buddha directed the Yaksha Kapila and fifteen daughters of Devas to become the patrons of China. Works 
The following works were authored by Kapila, some of which are lost, and known because they are mentioned in other works, while few others are unpublished manuscripts available in libraries stated Manvadi Shraddha, mentioned by Rudradeva in Pakayajna Prakasa. Dhyarstantara Yoga, also named Sadhanasara available at Madras Oriental Manuscripts Library. Kapilanyayabhasa, mentioned by Albaruni in his works. Kapila Purana, referred to by Suttasamita and Kavindracharya. Available at Sarasvati Bhavana Library, Varanasi. Kapila Samhita, there are two works by the same name. One is the Samhita quoted in the Bhagavata Tatparyanayarnaya and by Viramitradaya in Samskaras. Another is the Samhita detailing pilgrim centers of Orissa. Kapila Sutra, two books, namely the Samkhya Pravakana Sutra and the Tattvasamasa Sutra, are jointly known as Kapila Sutra. Bhaskaraya refers to them in his work Sabhagya Bhaskara. Kapila Stotra, chapters 25-33 of the third khanda of the Bhagavata Mahapurana are called Kapila Stotra. Kapila Smriti, available in the work Smriti Sandarbha, a collection of Smritis, from Gurumandal Publications. Kapilopanishad, mentioned in the Anandasrama list at 4067, Anandasrama 4067. Kapila Gita, also known as Drstantasara or Siddhantasara. Kapila Pancharatra, also known as Maha Kapila Pancharatra. Quoted by Raghunandana in Samskara Mayuka, Ayurveda books mentioning Kapila's works are Vagbhata mentions Kapila's views in Chapter 20 of Sutrasthana. Nishalakara mentions Kapila's views in his commentary on Chikitsa Sangraha. Kapila's views are quoted in Ayurvedadipika. The Kavindracharya list at 987 mentions a book named Kapila Siddhanta Rasayana. Hemadri quotes Kapila's views in Ashtangaradaya of the commentary Ayurveda Rasayana. Sarvadarshana Samgraha, Sarva Darsana Samgraha mentions Kapila's views on Rezasvara school of philosophy. Teachings Kapila's Samkhya is taught in various Hindu texts. Kapila states in the Mahabharata, acts only cleanse the body. Knowledge, however, is the highest end for which one strives. When all faults of the heart are cured by acts, and when the felicity of Brahma becomes established in knowledge, benevolence, forgiveness, tranquility, compassion, truthfulness, and candor, abstention from injury, absence of pride, modesty, renunciation, and abstention from work are attained. These constitute the path that lead to Brahman. By those one attains to what is the highest. Bhishma said to Yudhishthira, Listen, O slayer of foes. The Sankhyas or followers of Kapila, who are conversant with all paths and endued with wisdom, say that there are five faults, O puissant one, in the human body. They are desire and wrath and fear and sleep and breath. These faults are seen in the bodies of all embodied creatures. Those that are endued with wisdom cut the root of wrath with the aid of forgiveness. Desire is cut off by casting off all purposes. By cultivation of the quality of goodness satwa, sleep is conquered, and fear is conquered by cultivating heedfulness. Breath is conquered by abstemiousness of diet. Topic. Recognition Kapila, the founder of Samkhya, has been a highly revered sage in various schools of Hindu philosophy. Gaudapada tilde 500 CE, an Advaita Vedanta scholar, in his Basya called Kapila as one of the seven great sages along with Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana, Asori, Vodu and Pankasika. Vyasa, the yoga scholar, in his Yogasutra Basya wrote Kapila to be the primal wise man, or knower. See also Prahlada Narada Vyasa Bhakti Yoga Samkhya Kapila Thirtham Kal Village Kalayat Notes <laughs>